Hello, a warm welcome to everybody who's watching. This is the virtual book launch of my new comic book. The title is The Reign of God, A Gospel Story. It is the second book in what is finally a series. I hope you will enjoy this event. The last time I did a book launch was in Tokyo, but today I'm in Jakarta, Indonesia. I'm here at a co-working space. Um, it might be a bit noisy because there's a uh, event going on, but believe me, at home, it would be much noisier because I now have a six week old a uh, little baby son at home. So this is the most quiet I could find. I hope you enjoy this anyway. Today's event is split into three parts. First, I'll give a brief presentation about myself and the Reign of God book. There will be greetings from two of my friends and partners who have read the book and supported me in creating it. I will then introduce the different platforms where you can get a copy. In the second part, I'll bring you a conversation between me and my friend Miriam Jekyll, who is a theologian. We discuss the content and research of the book, but we will also talk about faith. In the third part, I will be available for a question and answer session. So if you like, you can write your comments and questions on Facebook and YouTube where this is streaming and I should be able to see them. I already see some comments. Let me check maybe uh, if everything is going fine. Yeah, looking good so far. But before we start, it's time for some important acknowledgements. See, now I live in Jakarta, but and I made all the final art for the comic here in Jakarta last year. But all the planning and research and rough drafts that became the basis for the comic happened in Melbourne, Australia. And I'm very grateful for all the opportunities I had there uh, to develop this book and myself as an artist. So I want to acknowledge that Melbourne is built upon the unceded ancestral land of the Wurundjeri and Boon Wurrung people of the Kulin Nation. I acknowledge the traditional and rightful owners of country throughout Australia and value their continuing connection to land, culture, community and life, paying my respect to their elders, past, present and emerging. And I hope some of you are even watching. Oops, sorry for that. I also want to acknowledge that the Reign of God comic book series has been supported by the City of Melbourne Arts Grants. Yes, I'm lucky to be a recipient of the 2020 Annual Arts Grants. And as I found out, I'm the only comic creator that year. I want to thank the Melbourne City Council for supporting comics and hope that more support for the beautiful comics culture in Melbourne will follow. Again, Melbourne has played an important part in my life and in the creation of this comic. My original plan was to hold this book launch in Melbourne in one of the comic shops there. However, COVID is still going on and I can't return to Melbourne. So that's why we're here live streaming. And with that, let's start. First of all, a little bit about myself. My name is Issei Fujishima. I am a Japanese-German comic artist. I have lived in Germany and Japan for most of my life, but in recent years, I have lived in Australia and Indonesia with my wife. And since six weeks, as I mentioned, I'm the father of a little baby son. I've been making comics and reading comics since I was small. Um, then I studied cinema in university, uh, hoping to become a filmmaker. That was still in Japan, but life took me on a very different path. And uh, then about 10 years ago, I decided to make a comic book series uh, because I wanted to tell a certain story. And uh, I found it would be very difficult to do it with film. Um, and this series would be about the beginning of Christianity. The title would be The Reign of God. 
I worked on this first book for three years and published it independently by myself in 2017, while still working mainly as a media designer. After that, I wrote small comics and essays, but I also started the work on the second book. I want to show you uh, just uh, the outcome of that. So this is the first book. Um, it has about 200 pages. So let me talk a bit more about the comic series, The Reign of God. Here we see the two main characters, Shimon and Yeshua, that is Jesus, um, from the second book. In a nutshell, The Reign of God is a comic based on the Christian New Testament. It is a creative retelling of how Christianity began. Of course, it centers on Jesus of Nazareth and what he said and did, but um, the book and the story, it takes a broad view of the world where he lived in and uh, the society and politics of that time. Imagine you could travel 2000 years back in time to ancient Judea and meet one of the original disciples of Jesus. Imagine there's no Christian Bible yet. Everything is in people's memory, in the stories they tell each other, not yet written down. If you could talk to one of the eyewitnesses, what story would you hear from somebody who really knew Jesus and who went with him on his journeys and witnessed everything by himself? Well, this is the premise of the reign of God. In this book, we meet one of the famous 12 apostles of Jesus about four decades after Jesus' death. At that time, a horrible war is going on in the Holy Land between the mighty Roman Empire and Judean rebels who strive for independence for Rome. It is in that place and at that time that a young Judean nobleman uh, whose name is Yosef has an encounter with Shimon who is one of the 12 apostles. Yosef wants to know what Jesus did. So Shimon begins to tell his story when he was younger. This is how the story begins. Among death and destruction, one man tells the story of how he got to know Jesus and his movement 40 years earlier and how that impacted his life. We see the events and personalities that would become part of world history through his eyes. In the first book, the main events play out at the Jordan River because it focuses on John the Baptist, the man who was a mentor and teacher to Jesus. John was a preacher who proclaimed that very soon a new age would begin. His message was that the God of Israel would usher in a new age of justice and truth and that anyone could gain forgiveness to be ready for that new age. So we witnessed the impact of John's message and the relationship between young Shimon, Jesus, John, and the followers of John, which you can see here. But John's message is not very welcome with the powerful Judean elites, the priests and the aristocrats at that time. Book one ends at the moment when John the Baptist is arrested by soldiers of the ruler of the area, Prince Herod. And then book two continues right at that moment. John, that charismatic teacher, is taken away, perhaps to his death. What will Jesus and Shimon and the other followers of John do? Shimon decides to go to the Sea of Galilee. In a small fishing town called Capernaum, he becomes a fisher. But then, just as he's getting used to his new life, Jesus turns up and suddenly this Jesus, or Yeshua as he's called in this book, has his own message and mission. I'm going to show you some more slides or from uh, the second book. 
We see some shepherds in Galilee. This is the moment when the disciples of John are uh, starting to fight with each other after his arrest. This is an aerial shot or aerial view of Capernaum, the fishing town where Jesus appeared. And here's some more of the fishing that was going on uh, with Shimon and his new friends in Capernaum. So book two has over 110 pages. There's a lot of everyday first century life and new characters. It is a rather short book, but it centers on the first moments when Jesus becomes a public figure. And I think the way I tell the story is quite exciting and refreshing. So there is one question that I often get when people hear about the reign of God. Why do you want to make a comic about Jesus? The short answer is because I think it's important and meaningful to rediscover the original message of the historical Jesus. See, I grew up as a Christian and my faith has played a very important role in my life. But the older I get, the more questions I have about Christianity and the Bible, about the real substance of faith and what part of my uh, Christian faith, faith is really worth keeping. At the same time, there's many tensions between the teachings in various churches and what people believe to be true and important and what role um, Christianity or religion in general plays in society, plays in politics and war. Those are very difficult questions. Um, I always question my own faith and wanted to get down to where Christianity started and what Jesus was really all about. There are now many comics about the Bible from Christian creators out there. Um, some have great artistic quality, um, but I think most of them either try to preach to you, they try to convert you to something, or if they are more like illustrated Bibles. The way I go about it in this book, The Reign of God, is to emphasize history and character, a re-examination, a rediscovery. I try to take the humanity of the characters seriously and to present them as unfamiliar strangers that need to be re rediscovered. Here is an author proof copy. Um, it has this funny stripe here that says, do not resell. resell. Um, yeah. I often say that this book, The Reign of God, is a challenge for both religious readers, but also for those who are not religious or Christian, because it goes its own way of approaching this difficult topic. But I think it is very exciting, and I'm convinced that it is a meaningful challenge that makes readers surprised, wondering, thinking, and discussing. So this is a good moment to hear from some of the people who helped me with this book. I asked them to send me a message on video beforehand, um, and I'd like to present them now because it's also boring to just listen to me. So first up is Ben Hutchings from Melbourne. Ben is an award-winning comic master at Squishface Studio. Ben is super creative, very funny, and always helpful. And I spent many days at Squishway's uh, comic studio when I was researching and planning the book and created the rough drafts there. And with this, let's hear from Ben. Hi Fuji, it's Ben Hutchings from Squishface, as you can see, because I'm right there. How are you going? And I want to say congratulations on your uh, amazing book, uh, Reign of God, book two. And congratulations as well on, it's, I mean, it's a huge feat to do such a big book uh, when moving country and becoming a father in the, I think the course of, of two years or whatever, whatever it was, not very long. So it's really impressive. Uh, the research behind the book, the knowledge behind the book must have been immense. Um, 
it's all paid off it's it's really really good um i want to say uh when reading it i was i did pick up on some of the influences that you mentioned um particularly uh now i can't remember names san pay san pay shirato who did uh, a series called kamui was one of the first series i ever manga series that i ever read and i could sense that in uh, your book reminded me of that in the sense of like there was this constant threat in this bleak world of of oppression and violence around every corner and this sort of desperation um which came through in your book uh and um also the work of uh tsuge yoshiharu who's another favorite of mine and just in the sense of um because i actually don't understand his stuff because i can't understand japanese but his artwork always really struck me and i could i could um feel some of that in yours uh, not a great comic not a great comic um, reviewer but or video maker but i just wanted to say that those are a couple of thoughts i had and um your artwork in this one is spot on it's really good i like this one particular shot of the boats on the water with the lights and then you know reflecting on the water and there's some really nice shadows from fire and bits like that and it just had a real really good kind of sense of um mood setting and stuff like that so yeah i could go on about it a bit but i think um um people should read it really and congratulations again and i hope you come back to australia sometime maybe when squish face gets back we can see you again and have a launch here maybe something like that and so have a great launch i'm going to be present at the launch online watching i probably won't watch this bit at all because i can't stand seeing myself but anyway <laughs> congratulations again on reign of god book two peace out Thank you very much, Ben. I do miss Squishface Studio and all the creative and quirky people there. It's so important for artists to connect and encourage each other. And Squishface Studio is just a fantastic place for that. Next up is a friend from Japan, Pastor Miwa Shigeyoshi or Shige-san, as he's also known. I know Shige-san from working at the same organization in Japan in the past. Shige-san has read an earlier draft of uh, book two, and he also read and commented on book one uh, much earlier. So for this one, for book two, again, he gave me valuable comments on the character psychology, and uh, it, I felt a lot of, in, of encouragement through his words. So as a pastor, uh, his viewpoint is from faith and his personal connection to the Bible stories. Let's see what he has to say. Hi, I am Shigeo Shimiwar. I work for uh, Gift Church as a pastor, uh, which belongs to Christ Church of Japan one of the reformed Presbyterian churches. So first, I would like to say congratulations, Fujisan. Uh, I've been waiting for a long time for the second volume of The Reign of God to be published. This comic uses most of the pages of what happened in Kafarnam. As you know, Kafarnam is the place where Jesus begins his ministry and also is a place Jesus invited uh, his disciples. The disciples who are originally from fishermen. So the, what I was looking forward to is for, com for this comic is how the author depicted uh, their encounter. So their encounter is beautifully and dramatically portrayed by the author in this book. At the heart of this comic, as the title Reign of God shows, so what is the kingdom of God? 
So it was depicted in Capernaum's sermon by Jesus Christ and the subsequent appearances of Yeshua as a healer. That is, the when the word of God is spoken and love is born between those who listen it. There is no doubt that there is a kingdom of God beyond the people who listen the gospel. The author says in the postscript, the rule of the kingdom of God is also related to the political realm. He, he quotes the Trump phenomenon as a bad example. I totally agree with the author's opinion. The actions of those who listen the word of God are finally beyond nationalism, marginalization, discrimination, hate crimes, prejudice, and even more religions. And that love is also something that has to be continued. So, reader of this book will find that continuous love is what happens when you hear, listen the word of God. As a pastor, and the preacher, I'm totally proud to be involved in this comic and to be a reader. Waiting for the next volume. Good luck and go for it, Fujisan. Thank you very much. Shigisan, thank you too. It's mo arigato gozaimasu. I appreciate this endorsement uh, coming from a faith leader because oftentimes I get um, comments from Christians when I introduce them this book. They are skeptical or a bit afraid. <laughs> so it means you're, if you're a Christian, even you can read this book and don't need to be afraid. Um, so with this, it's my big pleasure to tell you that The Reign of God Book 2 is now available. And, uh, how you, and I'm going to tell you how you can get a physical or digital copy. So first, let's talk about the print copy. The print copy is available through Amazon. You can visit your Amazon marketplace, uh, such as Amazon.com or .com.au, <laughs> and see if it can be shipped to your place. It should be easily available in uh, the US, UK, Europe, and Japan, and it can ship to other countries like Australia as well. The price is, um, uh, there's a basic uh, US dollar price, and for places outside of the Amazon marketplaces, um, Amazon will decide the price. Since we're looking at Amazon, we can also talk about digital editions. If you use Kindle, uh, you can head over again to Amazon on the web or to your Kindle store on your mobile device and find the book there. Best is if you browse my name, Issei Fujishima, together with the title, The Reign of God, it, because there is millions of books there and uh, yeah, easier to find it with uh, name and title together. A Kindle-specific book can be found there. Next up, if you use an iPad or Apple computer, you can head over to Apple Books Store through the Apple Books app. Search again for Issei Fujishima or The Reign of God, and you should find this page. And this is the page for uh, book two. For all the digital editions, it is best to use a tablet device um, about uh, medium sized, uh, such as the Kindle Fire or iPad. I myself have an iPad, and I must say that 
for example, the Apple Books version uh, is wonderful. It makes for a really enjoyable reading experience. But not everybody on this planet has access to Apple Books or Kindle or even to Amazon. And not everybody uh, likes those companies. That is also uh, OK. For all of you, I can finally offer the book uh, independently as a PDF. So you can head over to coffee.com, K-O-F-I.com. Coffee is a social media platform for creatives to earn uh, support, donations, and to sell their products. So I have my own coffee shop ha, 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 now at coffee.com Fujishima. You can find book one and two as digital downloads. You don't need to subscribe to coffee or anything, but you can simply make a purchase with card or PayPal, and then you can download uh, the PDF to your computer, and then you can put it on your uh, tablet device. The price for the digital versions is uh, about 9.99 uh, Australian dollar. This is the Australian dollar price. Uh, in US dollar, that's 7.99 or 7.99 euro. If you read the book, please write a review for me. That would help me a lot. So this concludes the first part of today's event. Next up is an in-depth discussion uh, about the book and its topics of history and faith between me and my friend Mirja Miekel from Germany. A Q&A session will follow after that. The conversation is about 20 minutes long. And uh, uh, depending on what comments I receive, I will answer. I already can see some of the comments. Uh, uh, the question here is, are those prices dollars, US currency? Uh, I think I just explained. Um, you have to really see your marketplace, um, especially on Amazon. Uh, if you live in Australia, for example, if you enter uh, Apple iBooks uh, or coffee, you should get the uh, Australian dollar price or uh, any other currency. Oh no, coffee is, um, I don't know how it will work with coffee, but on coffee, uh, the default is set to Australian dollar. All right, uh, please write more questions um, and I'm happy to read the comments and uh, we'll give a shout out to those people who are uh, writing later. Let me set up some things here. So, um, the conversation with Mirja Miekel. Mirja Miekel is a pastor in Germany's Protestant church. She's from Germany. Of course, she has studied theology, but she's also in the midst of earning a PhD. I have been in conversation from her, uh, with her from the first book. Um, and as I was working on book two, she really helped me a lot with her advice, opinions, and observations. Uh, we are old friends, knowing uh, each other from maybe 15 years or even longer. For today's event, we agreed to meet beforehand and uh, record a talk, which I'm going to present to you now. Please enjoy. Hello, Miriam. Thank you for joining us today. It's yeah, really nice to have you here. And um, I'm really happy that you join us because um, you're one of my very good friends. Um, I talk about faith um, with you a lot and I learned a lot from you. Um, that has personally uh, was good for my faith. And you uh, offered a lot of collaboration for this project, for this book project. Um, I sent you some early drafts and you commented a lot and it was really useful. And you're a theologian, um, so I really appreciate your opinion on all of this. So thank you very much. Um, I have to really acknowledge um, you really contributed beautifully to this work. Thank you. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. <laughs> I want to uh, talk a little bit and get your opinion 
because you are a theologian, you are studying theolo uh, theology and you are doing a PhD uh, right now. What's the topic of the PhD, by the way? I'm writing about creation in the Gospel of John. Creation in the Gospel of John. Creation and life and how he uses creation and life in the Gospel. All right, so you are really deep into the material with the Greek and the whole history and everything behind it. Yes, so, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what do you think as a theologian about, um, about this book, about how I represent Jesus and the Bible and this whole world of the Bible? I think it's super fascinating. I really, I loved when you asked me whether I could um, help you a little bit with your pro project. I was um, very happy to join um, because I both love comics and mm -hmm. obviously I'm quite interested in the Bible and everything. And um, I thought it was a really fascinating idea to try to um, really kind of make it get close to the historical um, look and feel of the period. And um, so I'm doing my PhD on the Gospel of John, but I'm not the expert on the historical side of mm -hmm. this. Um, but I think you really captured something there. Um, and especially I, I really, when you, when you started the project, you once told me um, that you had this idea of really showing the, um, the life and the, the look and the feel of um, Israel at the time of Jesus and mm -hmm. not pretend that it looks exactly the way that we think it looks or the way things look today. And I thought that's a great starting point um, mm -hmm. to kind of acknowledge that there is a difference yeah. in the culture and everything and that actually um you know the, the way jesus looked is more closely related to um, what people in arabian countries today look and you know not have that cliche brown haired blue eyed guy and um yeah from that i was really convinced that you're, what you're bringing to the table is something interesting and something new mm, thank you yeah um it was really um this whole project when i started the series a couple of years ago, um, even before I drew even one page or one picture, was really to start researching mm. and start to learn about that world. Like if you're a Christian, if you're in the church and so on, you don't really know about that world yeah. almost at all. You have a kind of vague notion, but when you go into the real, like in the, into the details, you know, you realize that there's so much that um, you didn't know about yeah. it, of course. But then oh, you God. also realize there's so much we don't know at all. Mm -hmm. Like science or the researchers or the historians and theologians, they still don't know about many of the details. Um, and it's it's just really fascinating. And to yeah, kind of acknowledge that and also to work with that um, realm of um, ignorance <laughs> or this uh, where th this this grace or white space where we really don't know what happened, but then also yeah. to bring in imagination um, mm. of how it could have been to create a kind of new story. Yeah. You just mentioned research, and that's actually something that I found really fascinating, how much work and how much research you put in into these works, because that just shows on every page that you really know what you're writing about, or you know, from the way the, the houses look and the clothes look and everything and the fishing methods, um, how did you go about this research? Oh, it's reading, 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 really. Mm -hmm. um, I So I cannot do this work at all without the internet, mm -hmm. where we there's a lot of research papers. And um, then when I was planning and researching this, I was living in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. And uh, in yeah. Melbourne, there is a wonderful library, the State Library, Victoria where there's lots of books about this topic. Uh, basically, it's really um, a lot of reading. That's one part. But the other part is I went to Israel and Palestine to kind of get a feel of how the landscape uh, is like, how it is like to to walk there, to, yeah. uh, to, to feel the air or smell or to hear to hear the landscape and so on. I think it's actually really great how you um, you form kind of a link because um, 
what we do um, in theology is often kind of, you know, we live in our own world and mm. um, our knowledge and our research, sometimes it takes a lot of time because before it gets kind of distributed to other people outside mm. our field. Um, and so I kind of love that you, um, you connect um, the scientific knowledge, the research with people who just love to read comics. Mm, I think mm, it's a really mm. great way because you're not kind of, um, it's not hard to read your comic. Like it, you don't have to sit mm -hmm. down and say, oh, this is work now, because it's actually quite <laughs> cool. But on the other hand, you can learn so much and you can see so much um, in there. And um, like you just said, the question of um, how people dealt with diseases. I mean, that's something mm -hmm. that comes up in your new book, um, mm -hmm. the question of how, how people, um, yeah, understood diseases and how they dealt with them and also the fishing and everything. So, um, yeah, you can kind of get a feeling for these things without having to read all those research papers, which are yeah. quite interesting, but also a lot of work to read. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think what I'm trying to do with all of this is to um, to make readers understand what mm -hmm. does Jesus's message and life and mm -hmm. uh, his actions mean in that kind of world? Why was it significant and how was it significant? Because um, normally we, when we read the Bible, when we hear about Jesus or the gospel stories, or we, we really, we are 21st century people. We cannot get out of our skin and out of that kind of mind. And uh, so we, I think there's lots that we miss or misunderstand when we hear about those stories, when we read the Bible, when we, when we hear it from uh, teachers or pastors. And it's only through the kind of, um, to, from understanding the life, and then from there, why um, was Jesus important? Or why did he have an impact on people at that time? One thing that always struck me was, um... You always have to struggle with the question of um, kind of the historical and belief mm -hmm. questions. Like, especially in the new book, um, you really get to the difficult parts of um, yeah. who is Jesus? Is he God's son? What's he doing? Is he actually performing miracles or not? Mm -hmm. And um, I was wondering, I mean, for the decision, what you're making, I think people just should read the book. But um, I, I was wondering, were you nervous or were you worried about what kind of choices you are making in these questions? Like how much do you depict Jesus as God's son or not? Is, is that kind of something where you think, wow, that's a lot of um, responsibility? Yeah, it, certainly I feel that. And um, I, I feel that I, I am at the point in my life and in my faith where I don't claim to have the answer or yeah. certain answers, but I want to tell a story. So in the book, the story is narrated by a disciple of Jesus, one of the yeah. apostles, and it's basically his perspective. He, um, when he is in the story, he is skeptical about what Jesus is doing. Yeah. And he's yeah. like, ah, th anybody can do this. This is not nothing special, but he, when he narrates the story, um, he remembers it 40 years later. And then he he's a believer and he, he um, from his perspective, um, miracles happened or um, certain, uh, yeah, Jesus did heal some person. Um, but I try to kind of not do it in a very sensational uh, kind of way, but it's still a hard kind of um, question what to do about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, that was a huge debate in um, my field, of course, the question uh -huh, of yeah. um, how we are treating the miracles. And um, of course, they are very diff different um, positions from people saying, no, none of this ever happened, mm -hmm. um, to people who say, yes, it did happen, absolutely, because he's the son of God and so on. So it's always kind of a debate. And um, it's always interesting to see what how we today can deal with those stories. Because of course, they yes. don't make sense in a way for us but they do make sense in another way. So we kind of have to interpret or, um, yeah, understand or find the meaning in them for us. I have a question for you where, um, 
you yeah you mentioned that it's um the the link linking the research or what what you do in theology with let okay my what i do is like a literature or pop culture or mm -hmm. yeah it's like entertainment um but if if we think of it in a broader way um how do you how how, how do you bring this research historical critical method or something to believers to people in churches hmm. and that's where i think it, it's a it's a harder question because yeah, when i i grew up in churches where um this kind of um academic approach to faith to bible and christianity was seen as something dangerous hmm. and um, it's and it's not welcome there people don't want to and the believers in those churches didn't want to uh, question anything so um do you think is <laughs> is it is it a risk do do you, is should believers should churchgoers be confronted with this kind of um with the, the theological academic field or should pastors just kind of like keep it in the background and focus on other things um i think well it can be a risk and that's mm -hmm. something that I actually experienced uh, with some of um, the people who studied with me in university, mm -hmm. um, especially those who came from very, um, let's say, conservative or evangelical backgrounds. Yeah. For them, it was really, really difficult to sit in the um, in the lectures and actually hear people say, yeah, well, uh, we don't have any archaeological evidence for Noah's Ark or for mm -hmm. even, we, we have evidence or probable cause that Jesus actually died on the cross, mm -hmm. but that's it. I mean, mm. I think you know that already. Mm. Um, so it was, for those people, it was really difficult to, um, to, to hear that and accept it because they felt their faith was being destroyed. Mm. Um, and that, of course, is a very painful thing. Mm. But I think on the other hand, if you, um, if you have a kind of more open faith, um, then these these questions they don't destroy your faith but they actually mm. enrich it mm. because um, you can start thinking of things in different ways and you don't have to cling to something like saying no exactly mm. like that it had to ha have been exactly like that otherwise everything is wrong but it's yeah. to kind of gain um, a fluidity that helps you to say yeah I can interpret it I can understand it I can um, I can apply it to my own life mm -hmm. and um, actually it helps me understand my faith a lot more and I felt mm -hmm. that also um, I mean I'm not only um, a trained theologian I'm also a trained pastor and um, I felt that's also the way for many people in very normal people in my congregation when they mm -hmm. say um, yeah there are aspects of the Bible or aspects of teaching that f feel very kind of suffocating or restricting mm -hmm. in a bad way um, but when they understand kind of the background of it or when they understand that they can interpret it in different ways, um, then it opens up something and they can yeah. feel, oh, wow, I can suddenly um, connect better to the Bible and I can mm -hmm. kind of breathe again in my faith. Um, and I think that's incredibly helpful. Mm. Um, yeah, and so I've always felt it's, um, it's not easy, of course, it's, it's always a challenge. Uh, but actually, I mean, faith is not knowing exactly. Faith is believing. So it's always there is a risk. This and, is um, yeah. yeah. This is really what you taught me, I think, or made me understand and realize when I don't know if you remember this, but it was really years back when I was mm -hmm. still in university and you were in university that we talked about this. And um, yeah, I was looking for something like an answer or certainty or something. Mm -hmm. And then you really uh, wrote me that, um, yeah, like if we cling to these kind of certainties or that mm -hmm. things that look like certainties but are actually quite brittle in yeah. what they in in their substance, um, if like this thing must be true um, for my faith or my whole worldview to um, make sense, and then this thing. Uh, is taken away from me because of I don't know evidence <laughs> or some research or, or a better argument, then yeah. 
it's like it just uh burst like glass yeah. and uh <laughs> And that's where you came and uh, said exactly this thing. Like, the faith is about believing. It's about this. Mm -hmm. There is a part of uncertainty that must yeah. be there. And uh, if 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 you're absolutely certain, then it's already about knowledge, and yeah. not so much about belief. And uh, that was really kind of liberating for me. I have to say. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow, it's so interesting because when we just got to know each other um, more than 10 years ago, um, you told me about your kind of journey from um, the faith where you came from and when you started to question the very strict beliefs and the kind of dogmatic traditions mm -hmm. that you came from. Mm -hmm. um, and I was always so impressed by that because I felt that you kind of um, you kind of freed yourself from a lot of restrictions and um, you kind of yeah you 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 always kept your faith but you kind of deepened it by yourself just by thinking and um <laughs> you know, empathizing with others and stuff and mm. i always thought wow that's a really um, impressive journey that you're going there yeah but it, it's really because of um people like you or uh, certain encounters and certain experiences that mm. yeah. i um had the chance to um, question and to ask uh, to to dare questioning or and then find interesting answers or and uh, it was really yeah I've been through a lot and I think um, this this book uh, series the reign of God is where I wanted to uh, explore my faith and then yeah. also kind of express it and yeah. it's, it's this um, book is part of that journey there was yes. something really interesting that you taught me uh, a while ago when we last talked about your work um, that you said, well, you have to kind of think how to structure the story, which characters to use and, you know, how to choose what you actually put on the page. And mm -hmm. I was just working um, on my dissertation, of course, and um, I'm kind of dealing with the same questions, but mm -hmm. backwards, like I'm trying to understand um, what John... Um, oh decided and how we can kind of understand what he's trying to convey and how he's doing it and mm -hmm. it's incredibly fascinating because he's yeah. very skillful and um and so i kind of suddenly i connected you with john um i mean i'm not saying that you're writing another gospel but i think the questions that the evangelists had, had, had to pose themselves or had to deal mm -hmm. with are kind of the same and it's a really interesting perspective to just kind of look at them as authors and kind of think Wow. So, um, how did they get to the decisions and the ideas that they made? Yes, yes. I think this is a very interesting question because, as a storyteller, um, you have you have to think in very different ways than, mm -hmm. for example, um, than a theologian, perhaps, or a researcher. So, thinking about what makes a story interesting, a plot interesting, is like the um, yeah, it is character driven. There is conflict. And if we if we talk about the Gospel of John, there's a lot of conflict. Um, and but then as a storyteller, um, where you know there are certain techniques um, to and certain methods to uh, make your story more interesting and effective, to build up your characters and protagonists as heroes or antagonists and so on. Um, there. If you if you go it, uh, uh, if you look at it from that kind of perspective, it, it might be very interesting because yeah he builds up certain anta antagonists and, uh, and 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 character development and so on. So um, it, it's really I, I felt oh um, I kind of make the same kind of decisions writing mm -hmm. the story and writing the book that the gospel writers might have had to face when they were like yeah. should i give this character a name should i mention this character or is this important and and so on and so on so yeah. it's 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 an it's a i think that's in my own unique uh, uh perspective that i uh, learned yeah. from there yeah. <laughs> yeah and i think work like yours then um also kind of helps us see the gospels in this perspective again Mm -hmm. um, like we, we kind of tend to look at them with such kind of pre-knowledge and dogmatic knowledge already. Yeah. And yeah. of course that's important, but that also kind of makes us um, 
miss a lot of the things that are actually going on. Mm -hmm. And um, because we always kind of read for the, I don't know, specific theologic, theological ideas in there. But mm -hmm. uh, if you really read it like a book, then suddenly you get to know or you notice different things like, um, oh, Jesus is really not nice sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, or he really provokes people in a strange way, or he uh, kind of carries on a misunderstanding for a long time. And yes, yes. Time. I mean, yeah. really just didn't understand the question of Nicodemus mm -hmm. in John 3 or whatever. And I kind of like that um, your work kind of gets that perspective across again. So it, mm -hmm. it can freshen our idea of Jesus and of the mm -hmm. disciples and everything, because we kind of put them on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they yeah. are more like statues often, and not so much the living, breathing people that they were. And so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much um, for uh, again for be uh, for making time today, and I'm looking forward to talking to you again. Oh, absolutely! Looking forward to reading the next installment whenever it's done. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, that no might pressure, be a while. Sorry. Yes, yes. <laughs> Yeah. But, yes. But really, thank you. I'm always enjoying reading your work because it's so thought-provoking and um, also quite beautiful. Thanks. <laughs> well, thank you for watching so far. I think I need a good cup of coffee now. Um, maybe you too. So, uh, but we still have um, about ten minutes uh of official event time uh we can use this for uh the q a uh questions and answer session i'm reading your comments here um and i want to address some of them let me put this off all right i'm looking at the screen right now um i seems that uh i don't get so many questions but it's more um your warm uh, messages of congratulations. Thank you very much, everybody who is watching and um, commenting here and giving me uh, their good wishes. Uh, let me start from up here. Yeah, shout out to Steve Edwards. Um, he's uh, live streaming this on Twitch uh, for me. Uh, I didn't uh, set this up at all, but he just uh, went ahead and did it. Thank you so much. Uh, Steve is also a, a comic creator from uh, Melbourne with his own very unique uh, fantasy comics. Uh, uh, the series is called Fallen Idols. Else, um, yep, some other uh, congratulations. Thank you. The cover looks great. Thank you very much. Um, trying to uh, be better at uh, making interesting covers. Okay. Carmen Singh is watching on Twitch. Um, Fallen Idol sent him there. Congrats on your son. Thank you very much for that. Alan Inglis says, lovely art. Thank you. I hope you will also enjoy the book, Alan. Ben is watching. Thanks. And wow, uh, this is from Andrea Coya Gio Viscaino uh, from Ecuador. Uh, congratulations, big hug from Ecuador. Thank you so much, Andy. Yeah, also an old friend. Uh, it's fantastic that you wrote me and uh, that you're watching and from Ecuador. Um, there's many, uh, seems people are watching from many different countries and that's really cool. I was very skeptical about um, doing a event online <laughs> because uh, last year when it became clear that I cannot go back to Melbourne and do my uh, book launch event in the shop or uh, other events uh, with guests uh, in one place or venue. I That was like the beginning of COVID um, and uh, when people were uh, start, started to uh, do everything online and including events or art events and I was not getting used to that and I thought, I don't wanna do that. And of course it's not easy to do but on the other hand, the opportunity is really that people from all over the world can watch and uh, that there will be a record uh, online on YouTube and Facebook uh, to rewatch again. 
René van der Winkel, friend from Germany. He already bought the book uh, from Coffee. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, he says, this one quality also stood out to me in book one. The research uh, really shows the atmosphere is so dense, like you are there to witness those events. Already got my copy of book two from Coffee. Thanks a lot. Um, I think what some the comment that I um, sometimes get is that uh, reading uh, this book um, is like uh, almost watching a movie. And uh, because, yeah, the atmosphere is dense and uh, maybe the, the way I uh, compose the uh, pictures. And it's, it's really, I, I told you that I uh, do read a lot of comics uh, in the past. Still, I do. Uh, maybe not the biggest comic reader. Yeah, but uh, there are certain things that I really love. Uh, but I am more a cinema person. Uh, I watch a lot of, I watch lots of movies. And for making uh, this first book and then also the second book, now um, I am more inspired and uh, by by photography, by photojournalism. I look at a lot of war pictures, a war war uh, photojournalism, and uh, pictures from uh, countries like Afghanistan um, to kind of get a get a kind of feel of what uh, because i'm i'm just in my mind um if i stay in my mind if i don't get the references if i don't uh check what uh life in other places is like uh i i don't know what to do and uh there's just so many different ways of living uh and realities happening all uh, on this earth uh that i have no idea about so this photojournalism uh movies documentaries uh, they actually helped me to expand my uh, uh, imagination for this. Um, John Chungli Tonger Naga, this is a person from Nagaland, I know, and Nagaland is in Northeast India. Um, thank you very much. He says, Congratulations, Fujisan. Thank you, Chungli. Uh, How is it going with your filmmaking? Um, this is fantastic because uh, Nagaland. Uh, is a part of India, yeah. Um, though some would be uh, are trying to get uh, independence, but um, the majority of the population in Nagaland is Baptist, Christian Baptist, and they proudly tell me that if Nagaland was an independent uh, country, it would be the biggest uh, Baptist country in the world. Um, Steve Martin. From Australia, congratulations, Fuji, and best wishes from us all at Sophia Spring. Thank you. Sophia Spring uh, is the church community or Christian community I was part of in uh, Melbourne. Oh, gosh, I really, and uh, Fina, my wife, and I, we really miss you. Madoka, Yoshida, Yoshida Madoka, uh, is a friend uh, from Japan. Uh, also, this is a friend from when uh, from my church in Tokyo. Congratulations, great work. Thank you very much. Uh, it's nice to hear <laughs> this from another artist. The latest comment from Alan. Uh, he's also Australian, living in Thailand, uh, also a good old friend. Efforts gone into the research to capture the historical setting of life at the time, society, culture, personal interactions, the atmosphere and landscape, alongside commitment to the integrity to the Bible message has resulted in a unique, beautiful insight which challenges and speaks to both heart and mind. Whew, wow, that's a long sentence and uh, thank you. It has substance. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's really, um, it's a kind of, uh, again, I'm, I'm walking a different way from most of uh, the people who make books based on the Bible. Um, uh, somebody mentioned to me earlier uh, the work of Robert Crumb. He uh, is a famous American uh, comic uh, creator who made a uh, illustrated Bible of the Genesis, uh, Book of Genesis, I think. And it's great. I love it. Um, it's so rough and um, and unadorned. And it also takes in, uh, into account a lot of the historical cultural uh, research and uh, setting, and um, I think, but I think Robert Crumb is not concerned about faith or uh, at all, and what 
uh, believers uh, or staunch churchgoers uh, would think about uh, that book or the stories or how he would um, depict them. But I think it's very fresh. But again, this is I'm making it in a from a perspective of somebody who is a uh, Christian, who is a believer, but tries to make sen more sense of this. Um, uh, for, for, first of all, for myself also, I try to be very unbiased and uh, open-ended. Uh, when I started the research on the book, I was really uh, trying to be as unbiased as possible as to the outcome. Because if the research or the probability says that, um, for example, Jesus could not probably not read and write, um, then I think, yeah, that's prob that's the probability that I have to work with. There is a, it's not impossible. Um, probably he could not uh, write because reading and writing in the ancient world were totally different skills. Um, but maybe he could read. That's still a, um, uh, in, within the realm of probability, but very improbable. And so the question would be, what do I do about um about it, do I depict Jesus as somebody who could read? Um, and then, so in that way, I try to, uh, yeah, be open-ended, be open to any kind of outcome, but still uh, see what, uh, why was uh, this relevant and significant in those days, and what relevance could those stories have today for us? Uh, Gray Gamer Tales One Twenty Nine. Um, wonder. Uh, uh, congratulations on your new book. I have read the first book and quite like the details and the emotions of the characters. Thank you very much. Your name is Anna from Brisbane. Who? I don't know you. Uh, maybe, maybe we have met at some event in Australia, or uh, you got the book from uh, some other source. Thank you very much for that. Rene uh, van der Winkel again. Say if. I may sneak in a question at that point. Yes. How much work in hours does one of those books take to produce? And is there an estimate how many more there may be? It's very difficult to estimate um, the hours um, because uh, the process uh, of, of get, getting from the idea, from the rough idea to the final book is, uh, is very long and uh, many, many steps in between. And I would sometimes... So, sometimes I think one page uh, takes about one week to complete. If uh, if I, I'm, I'm not sure if that calculation is right, but for me, um, I'm not the greatest um, drawing artist. Um, it takes a lot of effort for me to draw, um, and also doing the uh, story and the research and the and the characters and dialogue at the same time. So uh, I. I realized once more this work kind of work takes me a long time more than I wish um, it would. I'm not sure what to do about it if I can be more efficient or effective. Um, maybe collaborating with uh, other artists on it. It's a bit hard because it's so personal and uh, I have my very stubborn vision to kind of let other other artists in. Uh, I need the feedback from uh, readers, from researchers historians, theologians, and uh, people who uh, love comics for it, and then I will adjust, but uh, still the most of the work is just uh, myself. So um, I was wondering um, when, how could I make the next book? I have not decided, I'm just glad, oh God, this thing is out now, <laughs> I need a break. Um, I was thinking maybe uh, I should, uh, work more with digital digital uh, tools. For this one, yeah, the way I do it is really uh -huh, good that I brought this with me, is to work on paper first and then digital. So this is a rough draft. This is uh, like one chapter. And then I, I do these very uh, uh, rough drawings. Um, but I already write all the dialogues and everything as much as I um, can here. Um, so this very rough draft goes to uh, paper, paper, and this would be, it looks something like this. So this is very nice Australian carton paper, um, and I would uh, draw the uh, art here. Uh, let me show you another one. 
this is what you also saw. Um, by the way, this is in color. So this is one more uh, step in the work uh, work step uh, in the process that um, in the end, it becomes black and white. But uh, doing the color, when I scan the uh, art in, I can manipulate these colors to become a the gray tone that I want. So this becomes digital art, uh, a digital scan. And then I manipulate it further. And this time, I found myself doing much more digital uh, after work, uh, drawing digitally um, on what I already uh, have done here just to correct or to improve. So I thought maybe I should go all digital. Maybe that would really uh, save me some time. I know so many comic artists, they uh, have gone fully digital. And I can understand that because uh, it just is it, it uh, is such a time saver because the outcome, the pro product will go to uh, a digital format anyway. So I'm thinking about that and trying to maybe improve my skills also with that. Although I love wi uh, working on paper. Uh, Tilian Panthesis, I uh, hope I got the name right. Congratulations, Fuji, with your second book and your baby. Oh, this is Vicky, Vicky Nguyen from Squish Face. Yeah, another <laughs> wonderful friend and artist um, that I know from Squish Face. Vicky is an um, artist who uh, makes uh, her own fantasy stories and uh, on watercolors. And uh, oh gosh, her watercolor skills are just amazing. Such subtlety and such detail and the gradation. Like, <laughs> look at how rough this is. I'm ashamed to show this to you, Vicky, but... Um, yeah, uh, your your skills are just impressive. And I think, yeah, looking at what you did in Squish Face, I also uh, realized, oh, there's so much more potential in the watercoloring and so on. Thank you for your uh, wishes. Fallen Idols. Oh, nice. I love seeing the rough drafts of books showing the creative process. I hope to uh, maybe I can do more of that uh, maybe on my blog later to show more of that. Yeah. Alan says, very interesting, the artistic approach from rough sketches to finished work. Yeah, I, I also took some video. Yeah, I would like to really uh, show that on some blog or so. Um, of course, what you see, what the reader sees is the result, uh, that this is the best version of uh, anything. And uh, so this this can sometimes be really rough and terrible. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's good to uh talk about it because when i look at my old old drafts from the first book i see that i have actually improved um in terms of anatomy and art i'm still working on that a lot um but yeah uh through all these years i think um i have improved my skills alan says i have a couple of questions what impact has this journey of producing this project deepened or affected your own faith yeah this is a very big thing actually and i know don't know if i uh can just answer it in short but um one aspect is of course how i look at uh what, how i understand jesus um as opposed to before um I, I yeah i also had these questions if i do this research if i find out more about the historical uh facts or uh, what researchers who analyze the language or analyze um, the, all the historical, cultural, social, political context. Uh, if I know that, then will that, uh, will I still be interested in Jesus? Would I be still a Christian or interested in being a Christian? And um, although I was really looking for, uh, I was asked, wanted to know more and wanted to know really the nitty gritty about it uh i of course i was going into this uh with a lot of uh like wondering what will the outcome be and i have to say that the jesus that i find through that research um and through uh the history and uh, the academic um reasoning and so on the discussion is so interesting it's much more rich interesting fascinating mysterious than the oftentimes very simple vision of um, Jesus or the Bible, the apostles of, of, of faith that um, I, I was used to in the church. And uh, that really has enriched 
and made me actually more passionate about um, this person who uh, had such an unusual and radical life. And I can relate more to him, I think, uh, on, on different levels. He's not so much removed. Um, it has really changed and it has changed my, the shifted the priorities of my faith. It's not so much about what you believe, uh, if you are right or wrong, and will you go to heaven and those kind of things, but really what do you do with your life? Um, how do you live responsibly? Um, Jesus was passionate about justice, about uh, equality. I believe he was uh, passionate about uh, helping others, about sharing um and to uh he was really deeply concerned about power uh and who wields power and what do the people do with their power and those things um those sometimes more dangerous or risky things to say in a church or for some churches um those are the substance and essence of jesus's teaching i think and those things i can really be passionate about and uh, that's why i think it's so worth looking into this uh, life and uh, this man again. Yeah, we are uh, about 11 minutes over time. That's no problem because haha, we are on the internet. It's free. Uh, still many people watching. Thank you. Um, I would say um, maybe four, five more minutes for questions. If you have, is now your chance. Here, Alan says again, um, as an artist, do you find yourself in the zone while working where hours can go by without being too conscious of that? And how might that work with the responsibilities of daily life? Um, it's, it, yeah, I do find myself sometimes in this zone. Uh, artists, um, I think musicians uh, have experienced that uh, strongly. But sometimes, yeah, I'm drawing and or painting and then I, uh, yeah, hours can go just uh, pass by just like that. But it's true. There's, yeah, many things also I have to do for my life, for my, for my other work and so on. It's not easy. Yeah, uh, that's why also it takes time for me to accomplish this. But it's as an artist, it's important to uh, reserve your time, I think, and then to shut everything and everybody out where you can really concentrate on things. Let's see, is there more questions or comments? Happy to answer. Yeah. I don't get any more. That's also fine. Um, there is a little bit of delay uh from uh, on youtube and facebook here rene asks uh will the occasional youtube videos on your channel continue yes so it will um there uh before uh today before this publishing um i started a video series on youtube where i am in conversation with interesting people to talk about faith to talk about art to um just explore the things that I touch upon in uh, the comic series. Uh, I wanted to do a lot more, but then uh, the baby happened or <laughs> was born, of course. Um, and uh, then it's a bit difficult to uh, continue right now, but I want to make it work because there's many more people I want to uh, talk with um, about many interesting questions. So, yeah. Grey Gamer Tales 129. Uh, again, what is your other favorite historical period? One of my favorite historical period is the 80 years war because it involves complex religious conflicts in the 16th century Netherlands. I'm sorry, I don't know anything about the 80 years war in 16th century Netherlands. That's really interesting to hear. What other period, favorite historical period? Mm, good question. I love Japanese history um, and uh, to learn about that is always interesting. Um, I think uh, uh, the yeah, uh, 20th century history, I think I'm interested also in 20th century history uh, in general uh, because it is more, it's closer to our life and uh, I've um, 
there's so many things that we don't uh, really are aware of that actually happened in history um, not so many uh, years ago, but have a huge impact on our lives. And when you study uh, and do uh, history in more detail, when you not just, uh, I don't know, watch some Discovery Channel uh, infotainment, but really try to re read a research paper, uh, you find out that, oh God, this actually is totally different than what I th thought it was. It's so much more complex um, and uh, deep. So, um, and it, it's really worth uh, looking into these things and learning from history. Um, the 20th century is, again, because it's so much closer to what we experience in our days. So, uh, yeah. But I wouldn't be able to say uh, like that certain thing or so, yeah. Yeah, let's end with uh, Alan Inglis's uh, last comment. Congratulations and well done, Fuji. I hope the book goes many places and is read and enjoyed by many people. I think that's a wonderful closing statement. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, uh, everybody who commented, everybody who watched and still watching, I really appreciate it. I was looking forward to this day and uh, really nervous about it. And uh, now I can sleep well again. <laughs> um, yeah, please enjoy the book. Please uh, write a review if you want. Please share the information about the book. Uh, talk about it, discuss about it, question it. And uh, I hope uh, you will really enjoy it and draw something meaningful out of it from you. And with that, uh, see you again. Goodbye. And happy Easter.